Hey guys, Chad here with Apex Reviews. Just doing a quick update video on our 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn. For a full review of this truck, just check the description below. This is going to be a quick owner's perspective of this truck over the past 2,000 miles and some of the things we've done to it and some of the pros and cons. So first off, you can see we did change the tires and we did a leveling kit. So this is a BF Goodrich uh, All-Terrain TA KO2 and a 275-65 R20. We have zero issues with it rubbing, turning left or right, so nothing changed there. There's no spacers on the wheel um, or anything like that, so we're all set. It has a nice appearance to it. Rides nice. You get a little hum compared to the stock tires that were on here, but you can see there's no offset outside of the body, so there's no flinging of mud or anything like that on there. So overall, a good tire. We did lose about one mile per gallon going with this tire as opposed to stock. And with her driving habits, she does have a <laughs> kind of a lead foot, so um, she was getting about 17 and a half, 18 miles per gallon average. And with this, she's getting a little bit less, but the truck does have potential to get into the 20s um, with standard driving. Nothing has changed in the rear. We do plan on adding a Rhino liner at some point down the road, but overall, uh, that's really the only changes on the outside. And as far as a con goes that we found over the past couple thousand miles were the stock headlights. These are the Ram LED headlamps. They are not the auto adjusting when you turn, but they are the standard or optional LEDs. And really the light coverage wasn't that great from the factory. There was a hard cutoff um, on the edges of the road as well as um, there was no bleeding going up or anything like that. So it was a very defined line, but they were pointed very low. And when she did the leveling kit, I thought she'd have to reposition them to not, you know, be blinding oncoming drivers. But in this case, she didn't. The light coverage was great at that point, and the drivers have yet to flash her. So um, overall, I do think they're pointed down just a bit too low from the factory. And one thing that we found when we were camping is, and it's something you can turn off. So if you decide to turn this off in your truck, I'm not responsible for any damages. But the backup sensors... If they believe, you know, you're getting to a red zone or you're getting to a parking um, curb or something like that, and they think you're going to hit it, even though you're well aware of what's going on, it will hit the brakes for you and stop the vehicle. So if you're someone that maybe may not recognize those things or perhaps have a area where you, or you just want it to stop, you know, if that's what you like. But for us, we were well aware of what was going on and it stopped at a terrible time by itself very quickly. So we actually went into the, U the Uconnect system and totally disabled it. So just something to note, you know, I do like the backup sensors, but I don't really like it um, stopping automatically for me. Now, the truck has been good. We haven't had any squeaks or rattles or anything such as that. It's been uh, good to us. And again, it's only got a couple thousand miles on it. Seats are doing just fine. We've gone on some road trips with them, and they are adequately padded and feel very nice. Now, before I get started, I'd like to address one common point of contention that I found in the comment section of my review video, and that really revolves around that dial gear shifter. Now, I'm not here to debate if the column, console, or this rotary knob gear shifter is best, but I can give you some impressions from the ownership perspective. Now, growing accustomed to this took us a couple weeks. You know, I talked to her about it, and she said she was still reaching for the center console, like her previous car had to do her gear shifts, but over the next couple weeks she got used to the dial and it's became second nature. And I don't think that's any different than when you change a vehicle any other time. So if this truck had had a column mount, she would have still been making that reach. So it's just general changes with a vehicle and just getting acclimated to that new, that change. And when I've driven the truck, I found it to be a very tactical feel. It's very uh, metallic or um, it's a metal knob, you know, it feels good. It has good uh, connection to the truck. The delays from park to reverse to drive are very standard. It's There's no lag times or anything like that. And I can confidently trust that knob to go to the gear that I'm going to. And it's not just a spinning knob. It actually has, you know, four notches for each gear, and then it just stops. So you can easily turn the knob to drive, turn it to park, and just whip the knob left and right and without any concerns. So I think the knob is just a dramatic change and obviously a non-traditional gear shifter, but with time, I think you'll get used to it and find the benefits as with the extra center console space that you get, as well as the cleaned up uh, uh, column, as you obviously have with a column shifter, you kind of lose some sight lines on your cluster potentially, and it's just a busier column. So 
Take it for what you will. I know there's mixed opinions on it, but that's our take as a owner of this vehicle. And one other change I forgot to comment on with the rear of the truck is the bed lights are factory incandescent, even though the rest of the lights on the truck are LED. So we did switch those out to be LED bulbs from Diode Dynamics, and now it's a nice cool white color whenever the bed lights are on. So that should be it, and I'll continue on with the rest of the interior review. So radio sounds good, haven't had any issues. Uconnect hasn't had issues thus far with lockup or anything along those lines. And really it's been a trouble-free truck. You know, I was just watching a review on the new Silverados and just little things like, I think ergonomically Ram did a really good job laying out this truck since everything just fits nicely. It's positioned right. We, the, the reaching, you know, is at a great length. This is my arm fully extended as a five foot 10 male. I know arm lengths vary, but I can easily get to these switches when they illuminate when I turn them on. It's just everything is right where you want it and it doesn't feel out of place and it just feels good when you're looking out in the road, looking down at the screen, looking down to your cluster. It's just where you'd expect it to be. And I do like this little power outlet up here. So if you have a radar, you can easily have that positioned right there and not have a cord coming down your dash. So overall interior feels good. You know, we do both have Samsung Galaxy S8 smartphones and they hold right in here. You can see there's that little rubber tab. The phone can be pretty tall, obviously, and it stays up here and these buttons aren't blocked. With the new Silverados, from what I've read, when you put your phone in the holding spot, it's more or less up here and you're blocking your switches. So it's just, I think, a poor thought on GM's behalf. If you have a smaller phone, such as an iPhone 4 or 5C or something along those lines, it would be probably be fine. But with this, it's kind of future-proofing itself with that and having a USB-C uh, ports there so you can easily have your phone cord here, have your, you know, your charging slot right here, and it can be nicely tucked in here without falling and charging at the same time. So just overall, I think they did a really good job thinking about what the user was going to you know encounter as they own this vehicle and it's almost like they really went through and drove the vehicle and made those changes as they were developing the truck all right guys now wrapping it up uh, the engine has been good to us as well uh, great power it towed our camper just fine uh, daily driving it just feels good and it's been an excellent truck you know i think i've heard about some people getting pretty good prices on these big horns in this particular setup you know this one does is pretty well equipped um does have the dual paint sunroof in there too so um i don't remember exactly what the msrp on this truck was but i think we got it somewhere right around forty-five thousand from 54 55 so uh in the grand scheme of things with the prices of pickups now you know, I was looking at that video with the Silverado and it was 60 grand and didn't really have much going for it. So, um, you know, not to say it's not a great truck. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in a dollar per dollar perspective, I think you get a lot for your money with these Rams, especially with how pricey cars are nowadays. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Stay tuned.